Hey, alright guys, what's up? Welcome back to another Python tutorial series, uh, at least a video in the tutorial series, and we're looking at the Sys module even more. Okay, uh, I'm going to go ahead and get started. Um, very quickly, I'm just going to go ahead and import Sys inside of our interactive shell so we can work with it later on. And I'm actually going to do something a little different. I'm going to do a little experiment, first of all. I'm going to go ahead and create a new window. I'll call mine... Um, very easy, I'll just go ahead and call this program, I suppose, or this file jazzy.python. I don't know why I wanted to call it that, I just kind of did. So, I'm going to declare a couple variables in here. I'm going to say x equals 5. And, uh, that's all. <laughs> I guess that really isn't a couple variables. You know, just, just to sort of compromise, let's say let's say y equals 4. Alright, that's pretty easy, it's pretty pretty great. So, anyway, uh, we're done. That's, that's all there really is to it. I'm going to close out of that, and we should be good. <laughs> okay, so now, the when we're actually going to get into the sys module, what I want to show you guys is a, a new variable or a new sort of attribute that we can call within the sys module called modules. And uh, it's sys.modules, and what it does is it tells you every single possible module that you can actually, uh, you know, import from within your, your Python program or within your script, that sort of thing. We've got, um, actually, what is this? I think this is, yeah, this is a dictionary. So we've got bra brackets. I was almost going to say braces. Yeah, that's why I said brackets, and it sounded really stupid. Uh, but anyway, we've got strings that uh, actually represent our keys, and we've got more information representing our uh, values. But we can actually go ahead and actually use some commands or functions from within this thing here. If we use sysmodules, you know, and we were to look at all the keys, it's a function, those are all the keys, that sort of thing. We can do it one more time, and we can even check out uh, whether or not it has a certain key. We can check out, let's say, it should have time, I mean, that's pretty obvious. Yeah, it's got time, right down there, I think. We can check, maybe it has some things that... I don't know, GTK, and, oh, it doesn't have GTK, hmm, so, that way it'll give us more information about what sort of things we're working with in our system and, you know, all that. So, uh, that's pretty easy and pretty simple, though. What I want to actually show you now is working more with uh, Jazzy. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and import Jazzy, and that already exists because it's in the file system, we created it and that sort of thing. Now, if we check out sysmodules... I don't know whether or not it'll actually tell us that Jazzy's in there. So we can go ahead and check whether or not it has the key. That's a function there we can use. Has key. And I'm going to check for Jazzy. And uh, it does have it. Okay, so that's great. So now it knows that we have imported that. And uh, even if this is really telling us these are all the things we could possibly import, um, I don't know if it actually scans your current directory, because you can also use that as a place for importing all the modules or libraries that you're going to use within your Python script. But anyway, something more that I want to sort of elaborate on or expand in this video is working more with the modules, because we've got jazzy.x, uh, of course, and that's 5. But what if we didn't uh, want to have to use that preceding, like, dot selector and the name and everything, because it's treating jazzy as this, this module or the library they're going to be working with. But maybe that's very inconvenient. Like, every time we're trying to access things from jazzy, we always have to type in jazzy.x and that sort of thing. So if we want to actually import everything without having to use that stupid name like Jazzy, what we can do is we can say from, and then the module that we're going to be working with, from Jazzy, import all. And the asterisk actually represents all for us. So now it's going to run that. And if I were to type in X, I haven't even declared X, but it's still 5. And I've got Y here too. Y is 4. Now I believe we can still use our Jazzy X, Jazzy X, and we can still run that but if we were to try this in a different Python shell, if I go ahead and import, uh, actually, from Jazzy, import all. If I were to still run x, that works. But jazzy.x will not work because Jazzy is not defined. So it only works in this, be in this case, or in this shell, because Jazzy has already been imported all by its lonesome. Like all the way up here, we've got import Jazzy. So there is a little bit of understanding that I, I, I kind of threw in here. Sorry, that might, might, that might confuse you. I really hope it doesn't. But 
if we call everything from Jazzy, then we can call it without the name. But if we only call Jazzy, at least import Jazzy, then we'd be using the name. So uh, that sort of thing. Also, what if we sort of change something? So what if we open Jazzy right back up? I'm going to open it right up here. Now let's say Y can be 10. Now, this is very unlikely, you, where you actually would need to do this, but what you can do is go ahead and reload that module. And we've got a function there to do that, just that, called reload. So we can reload at Jazzy. And now that's been set up, we can use jazzy.y, and that's 10. I don't know about Y just yet, because it hasn't been modified, and we aren't using that whole from Jazzy import everything. Now we still have a uh, Y is 10. Okay, great. So that's very simple. Reload is really just another way, or at least a little bit more of a logical way, to re-import the thing. You could very well just go ahead and type this all out again, but when you're using reload, it kind of gets in your mind that that's what you're doing. You've already imported this module. You're just going to do it one more time, and maybe maybe things have changed. It's very unlikely if you're working with someone else's you know, um, library or module. I don't know why it would ever actually change while you're in the middle of your code. But hey, <laughs> we still have the option to go ahead and reload or import once more some of the modules that we've been working with. So we've learned a couple things in this video. We've checked out the sysdot modules, um, you know, variable or dictionary, and we've actually checked out the reload function and different ways that we can import things from a different module and actually sort of help out our naming or actually a syntax scheme. So there's a lot of crazy stuff going on here, but I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you got a little bit more insight and now you can work a little bit easier inside your Python lives. <laughs> All right, that sounded so cheesy. All right, I'll see you guys in the next video. Adios.